Live from Waterford and Ungarvan, this is Waterford at One News. Good afternoon, I'm Liz Reddy. Today's top stories, Fine Gael could have three candidates running in the next general election. The chairman of the Land Development Agency says Waterford is now the only city in the country that's affordable to live in. Waterford Institute of Technology is set to receive 1.2 million euro for new student places and in sport, Waterford FC are looking at two new players. Fine Gael could have three candidates running in the next general election. Councillor Liam Brazel says he's been asked by the party to run on the ticket alongside councillors Damien Gagan and John Commons. He's told the Fine Gael regional organiser that he will consider it. Liam Brazel told WLR News that he will decide this week. He says both Damien Gagan and John Commons have already canvassed his local area, which may have a bearing on his decision. Last month, Waterford Fine Gael election candidate John Commons Commons said he believed the party should run just himself and Damien Gagan. They, along with Fawdy Coffey, were on the ticket. However, the senator announced that he's retiring from politics. I believe we have a, a strong ticket in, in myself and Damien Gagan, certainly geographically uh, spread with the city in Dungarvan. So I think the, the ticket is sufficiently strong. But, you know, those decisions are made by the executive. The party decided to add both myself and Councillor Gagan with Senator Paddy Coffey. Obviously with the, the incumbent and the sitting Aractus member stepping down it changes that landscape. Speaking to Damien Tiernan on Daisha today, Damien Yakin says it doesn't make sense to run three. Would I be against Liam Brazzle standing? I don't think it would make sense uh, to have Liam Brazzle and myself on the party ticket here in West Watford. We'd be too close to one another. So obviously but, I don't want to put words in your mouth just like you said with Eamon. You are against it. I just don't think it would make sense. Waterford's now the only city in the country that's affordable to live in. That's according to the interim chair of the Land Development Agency. John Moran says the city with the most affordable housing is Waterford and that Ireland could face political instability if all the development is concentrated in Dublin. He says there is a need for higher density neighbourhoods if Ireland is to have any hope of catering for the projected increase of one million people by 2040. He suggests up to seven storey apartments is what we need to start thinking about and we also need to be moving away from cars where there is a public transport option. Meanwhile, social housing that is well planned out will not cause problems in inner city areas. A meeting of Dublin City Council's Housing Committee has heard that it's better than building homes in suburbs with weak transport links. Mike Allen of from Focus Ireland says good planning will avoid many major social issues. There's no evidence that building uh, concentrations of well-built, well-maintained, publicly, properly run social housing in inner city areas is anything other than a good idea. And it's very worrying that it's become just part of the... I agree that it's helped to overcome it by doing the public housing thing. I agree with that. But it shouldn't be necessary because it's simply not true that if you do it well, it's problematic. Iran's supreme leader has described missile strikes on military bases housing U.S. troops as a slap on America's face. Tehran's been vowing to avenge the killing of its top general, Qasim Soleimani. Two locations were targeted in Iraq, although there are no reports of any casualties. And Donald Trump's tweeted that all is well. Ayatollah Ali Khomeini says the attacks are a warning to the US. A slap was delivered last night, but what is important is that the seditious presence of America in the region should be ended. The airline whose plane crashed in Iran, killing all 176 people on board, has been defending its safety record. The Boeing 737 came down shortly after takeoff. Among those killed were three British people, but most passengers were Iranian and from Canada. The two flight data recorders from the plane have been recovered. Waterford Institute of Technology is to receive 1.2 million euro for new student places. 142 additional places will be created across six courses over the next two years. It's part of the government's human capital initiative. Dr. Derek O'Byrne is Vice President for Academic Affairs and Registrar at WIT. We've got funding for extra places in our engineering, in our computer sciences and a new programme in business information systems. The impact of this is that there will be extra places
places available in our September 2020 intake and that'll mean a little bit easier to get into our college but also it'll mean more graduates for the region in areas that have very high skill demand in terms of graduate employment and are very high earnings from those industries. So I think great news for the region overall. Two men have been arrested after a minibus was stolen from Dublin Airport in the early hours of this morning. Three passengers were on board at the time but were left off on the M1 uninjured. Sean O'Regan reports. Shortly after one o'clock this morning, two men boarded a minibus at Dublin Airport and drove it in the direction of the M1. Gardaí say continued north on the motorway towards Drogheda and the three passengers got off near Julianstown. The bus was followed by Gardaí before it crossed the border and when it passed north of Dundalk, the PSNI were called. It then came back into the Republic in Monaghan and was found crashed and abandoned a short time later. The men fled on foot before stealing a parked car. Gardaí intercepted the car with assistance from air support near Castle Blaney and two men in their 30s were arrested. They are being detained at Cark Macross Garda station where they can be held for up to 24 hours. Lisa Smith's solicitor has asked for the terrorism case against her to be dropped. The Louth native who's accused of membership of ISIS has appeared in court for the fourth time. The court heard the DPP hasn't completed the book of evidence on in the case with the state solicitor describing it as complicated and substantial. Her solicitor told the court there isn't a single piece of evidence to support the charge against her and asked for it to be discontinued. Eleven projects from seven schools in Waterford will be competing at the finals of the BT Young Scientist competition. It gets underway this afternoon and will be open to the public from tomorrow. Art Skull Namara, St. Angela's Art Skull Nadesha, Blackwater Community, Square. Gael Closhta, Fort Lauriga, St. Paul's and Abbey Community are all represented. One local project looks at whether sweet flavoured e-liquids are a factor in the vaping epidemic amongst teenagers. Another says there's a cure in the ground for everything. In total, 1,800 projects were submitted with 550 making it through to the finals. A Waterford Green Party councillor would like to see no car zones outside schools in Waterford. Councillors in Fingal in Dublin recently voted to support a trial at primary school in Malahide. It'll see cars prevented from driving to the school gates at drop-off and pick-up times. Councillor Marco Cassie gives himself a teacher in Tremor. There's a great deal of danger associated with traffic around schools and it's a twin problem. It's the danger of the, the actual physical danger of the, the vehicles themselves. But probably more dangerous and more insidious is the tailpipe emissions. And so we know that there's been... 1,500 premature deaths in Ireland in the last year, the EPA reckons, which is to do with air pollution. And we're exposing our children to these elevated levels of air pollution at the drop-off times around schools. WLR Sport. Two new players are being linked to Waterford FC. The club is back in pre-season training. and it's reporting that Tyreke Wilson and Robbie McCourt may be joining. Yesterday, they completed the signing of Kevin O'Connor and loan from Preston North End. Matt Keane reports. Waterford FC are set to snap up Tyreke Wilson and Robbie McCourt. The Blues yesterday announced the return of Kevin O'Connor to the RSC on loan from Preston North End. And the new players are set to follow his arrival with the capture of Wilson, aged 20, from Manchester City and a 21 year old free agent McCourt left back Wilson who made his Ireland under 21 debut recently moved to Manchester City from Cherry Orchard on a four year deal in 2016 but he will leave early in a bid to kickstart his career McCourt started out with St Kevin's Boys and had three years at West Brom before joining Bohemians in 2018 the versatile operator left in September and had been lining out for Talker Rovers but he will now return to senior football with Waterford FC and more new signings are expected during the course of the week. Matt Keane, WLR Sport. 
Republic of Ireland uh, midfielder Glenn Whelan feels like he was thrown under the bus by Hearts. The 35-year-old was released by the Scottish Premiership strugglers yesterday after falling out of favour following the appointment of manager Daniel Stendell. Speaking to the Irish Independent, the Dubliner claims the club handled his departure in an amateur way and didn't speak to him before asking him to cancel his contract. Manchester United manager Ole Gunnar Solskjaer says their performance in last night's League Cup defeat to Manchester City was the worst since he took over. They lost the first leg of their semi-final 3-1 at Old Trafford. Leicester meet Aston Villa in the first leg of their semi tonight. Fox's boss Brendan Rodgers believes it's a crucial that his team take a lead into the away leg of the tie. Rodgers says they need to make home advantage pay. The players have been brilliant up until this point. We've, we've had away games every round of this this tournament so uh, so this is nice for us to to have the first leg at home and uh, we want to go and and uh, and hopefully create some sort of advantage to take the Villa Park the overall winner of the 2019 Granville Hotel GA Award will be revealed at a gala dinner on Saturday night. Special guest on the night is the CEO of the Federation of Irish Sport, Mary O'Connor. Throughout the week, we'll be looking at the various monthly winners ahead of the big event. And Beth Carton was the winner in July. She scored five goals and 36 points in six matches in the summer as the day she made it back to the All-Ireland quarterfinals. She was named player of the tournament the Grey, as the Grey's Jew outfit won the All-Ireland Sevens against local rivals Gualtier in Kilmacud Croaks. And she said it was a year of highs and lows as they went out of the championship to eventual cha- champions Galway. Yeah, look, I suppose it was a, a season definitely of, of mixed emotions. Um, we definitely, I suppose, you could see the improvement from, from last year. Um, started off with the tip game on June the 15th and, and look, that was definitely a day of mixed emotions with the, the abandonment and, and everything. But we took it game by game and, and to get back to a quarter final was massive. Dallas Al College are playing Middleton CBS in the Heart Cup quarterfinals at Firefield. At the moment, it's a repeat of last year's semi final, which Middleton won with a dramatic injury time goal. Um, after 60 minutes, um, it's Middleton three points, Dallas Sal one point. And that's the latest on WLR. Our next bulletin is at.